There are plenty of mistakes you can make when you're knitting socks, and we're going to chat about some of those mistakes in this episode of Knit and Chat. So settle in with a drink and your knitting, and let's have a good chat. Hey Nerdy Knitter, Tanya here. I'm a certified knitting instructor and a master hand knitter. The goal here at Nerdy Knitting is to help you become a more confident, adventurous knitter. And learning to identify and avoid mistakes when you're knitting socks can certainly go a long way to building that knitting confidence. So I collected some of the things that I've done that are mistakes when it comes to knitting socks or mistakes I've seen other knitters do. And I even asked here on YouTube, I asked the community if they had any mistakes that they either made or they knew about and things that you should avoid when you're knitting socks. So I've collected all of those, condensed them, and we're gonna chat about that today. Let's start with a comment that we got from Lights Out, and she has a list of some of the mistakes that she made, and you can see them right here. Some mistakes I made when I started knitting socks, needles that were too large, gaps in the heels and corners, using 100% merino for socks, and not knowing how to accurately accurately calculate the length of the foot. We're going to talk about all of those. She was really right on the money with choosing the things that she saw as mistakes that she had made because those are a lot of the same mistakes that I made and we're going to chat about those today. So the first mistake that I often see that I've made myself is choosing the wrong yarn for your socks. Like the comment that was left when she said she used 100% merino. Merino is lovely and it's soft, but it's not very durable. And if there's one place you want durable yarn, it's probably on your feet. So you might love that merino, but you might want to add some nylon to it and um, some other things to make it more durable for your socks. So I know that I've heard of people using 100% cashmere and oh goodness, that sounds absolutely lovely, but that's not good for socks. I'd be surprised if you could wear them for more than a week before you'd start to see holes because cashmere is lovely and soft, but it's not durable. So the first thing is to choose a sock yarn that is durable. And there's a few things that you can do to make sure that the sock yarn you choose is going to make socks that last more than a few wears. The first one is the fiber content. Now you can use merino. There are plenty of sock yarns out there with merino yarn, but you want the addition of something to add some strength and durability. That could be nylon, it could be silk, or it could be mohair. All of those add strength. I know silk and mohair seems like they should be very delicate fibers, but they're actually pretty strong. So when they are combined with something like a merino, they add some extra durability that that merino is missing. But I actually like a different wool fiber for my socks. I prefer a blue face luster or BFL. And you can, you can find those um, in sock yarns. It's not as common as seeing superwash merino, but you can find BFL yarns. And I'll link to one of my favorite sources down below, Alley Cat Yarns. She's a hand dyer here in Canada, and she uses a great BFL base. Now, if you were to hold one, a BFL skein in one hand and a merino skein in the other, you might be able to tell a slight difference between the two. The merino is probably going to feel a little bit softer, but when it's on your feet, your feet are not going to be able to tell the difference, but that extra durability from that other wool besides a merino is just going to provide more strength so those socks will last. Now, this happens because uh, different sheep, different fleeces, different wools, they have different staple lengths. And I think I'm not, I just started doing a little bit of drop spinning, so I am not an expert when it comes to spinning at all. But part of the process of spinning the different lengths of fiber, I think the longer the fiber is, the more durable it is. And Merino has very short, soft fibers. BFL has longer, sturdier fibers, so they can be twisted more often. And that's another thing you want to look for in your yarn is a good high twist because when those singles are spun and they're twisted together to make the yarn, the more twist that you can add to that yarn, the more durable it's going to be. If you've ever seen like a single ply or just a single all by itself, it's not really very durable. It's not usually highly twisted. It's usually very soft. If you knit a pair of socks with those, they're going to wear out because 
it's just the one strand and there's lots of space for those fibers to rub against each other and wear out. When you take those fibers and you twist them together, they hold together more firmly and they don't rub against each other as much. So that's why a merino is not so great because it's shorter fibers, much softer, and you can't twist them as much as you can longer fibers like a BFL. And of course, there are other wools too, like BFLs that have longer staple lengths that can be twisted more highly, and those work for socks as well. So you want to look at um, adding something for strength like nylon, mohair, or silk. Look at different fibers that are more durable, and also look at the twist in that yarn. Like I love Knit Pick Stroll, but when I look at that, it's not highly twisted and it is merino, so it's a lot softer. So I do use that and my daughter's socks don't wear out like mine do. So I use Stroll a lot for her socks, but for my socks, it's not so great because my socks do tend to wear out along the heel and then the ball of the foot. So if I do use Stroll, I do another thing that where I add either like a, a slip stitch pattern, the kind that you put on your heel flap and gusset, that heel flap, you can put a, a, a slip stitch pattern there, but I mean, it's not necessary. I knit plenty of socks without that, that slip stitch pattern. But what I do is put that pattern on the heel turn itself and that adds some durability in that one spot. You can also use like um, reinforcing thread and hold it double with your yarn or weave it in after in those places where you know that your socks tend to wear out. But the first mistake I see, yes, is choosing the wrong yarn. You want a yarn with a good fiber content and a high twist um, and three plies. That was the other thing, more three or more plies because along with that twist, the more plies you have, the more durable that yarn is gonna be. Now, the next mistake I often see with hand knit socks is the gauge, a loose gauge. And when you're knitting socks, you want a nice tight gauge and that will add to that durability. If you have that 100% superwash merino, nothing else in it, and you knit it at a very loose gauge, those fibers again, rub against each other, wear out more quickly. So when you knit at a tighter gauge, those fibers or the yarn strands, they sort of hold together. They're not rubbing against each other as much as they would if they were very loose. So they are more durable as well. So when you're talking for socks and different fingering weight, sock weight yarns will have different numbers on them. But if you're look anywhere between like a uh, seven to eight stitches to the inch, and that would give you a durable sock. I actually like to go down to about nine stitches to the inch. And I think that works well. I, I don't, I haven't had any socks wear out when I knit them slightly tighter. So most likely you're probably going to go want to go down a needle size or two or a few if you knit loosely, or if you know that your sock gauge, if you take out a pair of socks that you've knit and get a ruler and measure a couple inches as wide as you can across like part of the sock, probably across the foot because it's most likely in stockinette and you can get a good idea of what your gauge is for your socks. And when you're doing that, also measure your row gauge too, because that's important to know for your length. And we'll get to that later on. But you want to make sure that gauge is nice and firm. So anywhere between seven, eight, or nine stitches to the inch. So like most of my patterns, I write for eight stitches to the inch. But if I'm knitting a personal sock, I tighten up. I go down one more needle size sometimes and make them just a little bit tighter to make sure they're going to be very sturdy. But this, this is something that you learn as you knit different, uh, as you knit more socks, you'll see what size needles you like to use and you can start measuring and see. And then once you know, you pretty much know for every future pair that, okay, I get this many stitches to the inch on this size needle and it fits in this many stitches for the circumference of the sock fits my foot very well. That's something you got, you'll learn as you knit more socks. I have knit plenty of socks and a lot of, goodness, at least my first two pairs didn't even fit me. One was super tight and the second pair I think was still too tight. So you're just, unless you wanna swatch and do all of that, but I don't bother for socks, honestly, because they're such a small thing anyway, but I don't mind using them as a learning tool. So I'll knit a sock just to learn like a, a heel construction or a certain technique or just to practice, but you can always rip the yarn out and use it for something else. But if you're the type who 
just wants that finished thing and you want it to fit well, then you're probably going to want to swatch to make sure that it's going to fit or start knitting it, try it on. And then if you have to, you can rip it out and change your needle size or the stitch count or anything like that. But that is a second mistake I often see is the knitting at too loose of a gauge. The third mistake that I often see is choosing the wrong size to actually knit. And that comes down to understanding how the pattern is written and how the sizing is determined. Now the pattern should have at least the finished measurements for the sock itself. It should at least have that and it should, it's a good idea if it tells you what size foot it's for. And I don't like, I personally don't like the ones where it says for like a size woman eight or size woman's nine because that doesn't tell you like how wide that foot is. I mean, I wear a size nine and, or anywhere between a nine and 11, depending on the shoe, but my foot is very wide. Other people might wear a size nine, but their foot is very slim. So the sock circumference for both of us would be very, very different, even though the length might be very similar. So what you want to look for in the sock pattern is that sock measurement. And usually, I mean, the length is completely adjustable. So you're looking at the sock circumference and you want to choose one that has about that's about 10% smaller than your foot, more or less. It doesn't have to be that exact number. And then depending on a stitch pattern, if it's a rib sock, you could even go even smaller or tighter if you wanted to. It really is preference, but personal preference, but you want to start with it at about 10%, which is, I mean, about an inch or so for an adult size sock. So like my foot, measures about 10 inches around at around the ball of my foot the widest point it's very wide foot so when i look at sock patterns i'm going to choose one that says the sock has a nine inch circumference that's about an inch less about 10 percent less than the circumference of my foot and that's referred to as ease if you're not familiar with ease whether that's positive ease or negative ease it all refers to how a garment, how much space is between that garment and the body part that it's on. So I'm wearing this um, lovely little shawl cardigan thing. I'll put a link for it down below. It's really a fun pattern. Um, but when I hold my arm out, you can see it's a lot bigger around than my body. It has a lot of positive ease. But underneath, I'm wearing a t-shirt. It has mm, maybe a little bit of positive ease not very much. So that means that's the amount of space between that garment and my body. There's a lot of space between this garment and my body. There's not much space between this garment and my body. Or if I wore a, like a camisole that was very, very tight and form fitting, that probably has negative ease. If I were to take it off, it would be smaller than my body. So it has to stretch to fit. And that's what you want in your socks. You want them to stretch to fit. If they're bigger than your foot or about the same size, then they might not stay on your foot. I know it's winter right now, so I have some socks that are looser and if I wear them with my winter boots and I come in the house and I take my boots off, that sock usually stays right in my boot. And that's how I know it's probably a little too loose. I have other pairs that fit very nice and firmly and I can take my boots on and off and those socks stay on my feet and not in my boots. So that's a weird little test if you're in a cold climate and you have winter boots. But um, so what you're looking for is a sock that is smaller in circumference than your foot. That will give it some negative ease. It has to stretch to fit over your foot so it will stay in place. Now, of course, if you're knitting like bed socks or slipper socks, not so important. You might want something that's more loose that you can slip on and off real easy. But for socks that stay on your feet, you want some negative ease. So look at that pattern, look at the finished measurement for that sock. And after you've knit a few, you'll start to know the stitch count that you like to use. For myself, to get that nine stitches, eight or nine stitches to the inch to make sure it's gonna fit my foot well, I usually cast on 72 stitches. And that gives me a sock that's about nine inches around and stays firmly in place. But that is adjustable considering different stitch patterns. If there's something lacy and light and open, I might go down a size because I know that lace is gonna open up and stretch even more. Rib socks are great because they are more adjustable and they'll fit a wider foot range and circumference sizes. So that's something as you knit socks, you'll discover like generally the stitch count and the needle size that you like to fit your foot. 
but you do have to understand this concept of negative ease. So you want to measure around the widest part of your foot, usually like the ball of your foot, get that measurement and then look for a sock size that is about an inch less than that. If you're an adult, I think it's about half an inch for a kid's sock. You don't need to be a full inch smaller. But for an adult size sock, look for the one that's about an inch smaller than your foot circumference or the foot circumference of the person you're knitting for. And that brings us right to the next mistake that I see and that is not measuring your foot and just going by those sizes like in the pattern that says, oh, this is for a US eight woman's foot or whatever. Like I said before, that really is sort of an arbitrary thing because it's the the width of the, or the circumference of the foot that matters. And usually like a size eight, size nine, whatever, that's measuring the foot length. And that is completely adjustable, of course, depending on the pattern of the sock but it's the circumference you want to look at. And to know that you need to actually measure your foot or the foot of the person that you are knitting for. So you should measure a few different places. You want to measure the widest point, like the ball of the foot. So like the ball of the foot is probably right around here, but if you're wider somewhere else, measure there. So measure around that part and write that down. Then you wanna measure from your heel all the way down to your toe. So you could like put your foot against a wall and rest a ruler against that wall as well and then see where your toe is and see where your toes start because that's generally about where you want to start your toe shaping. More or less depends on the pattern because some toe shapings happen really quickly and they're very short. Other toe shapings, this one is quite a long toe so it takes more rounds to get there that depends on the pattern as well as you knit more socks you'll decide which type of show sh toe shaping you like you'll be able to figure out how many rounds that is and how long that toe is that comes with practice as well but you want to get that measurement for the widest part and you might want to measure your ankle as well and see if there's a difference see if they're about the same generally a general the, uh, the general consensus is that that widest part and your ankle are about the same size. So that sock circumference will fit in both those places. But of course, there are plenty of people who don't fit within that. Like they could be wider on the ball of their foot and they have a very slim ankle or they could have a wider ankle and a very slim foot. In that case, you can do what uh, Kate Atherley refers to as a Franken sock. Cast on to fit this circumference here and then change your stitch count to fit this circumference after your heel turn. I talk about that in another video and Kate Atherley talks about that in her book, Custom Knit Socks. I'll put a link for both of those down below if you wanna dis discuss or talk more about um, like proper fit for socks. But you wanna at least have those measurements so you know how long your foot, your sock is gonna be and the width that you have so you know what type of, or how many stitches you need for your sock or the circumference of your sock. Oh, and you can also measure, this is getting more custom when you get really into fit, this part right here, that heel diagonal, to see how high that is because there's also the instep, like how tall is this area of your foot. I also have a, a high instep. I have a wide foot, high instep, wide heel. So like for a good fitting sock, I can wear a short row style heels, but a heel flap and gusset fits a little bit better for my foot because of the wideness of all of those places or the depth of my instep. So it's good to know your instep as well. And I talk more about that in another video, which I will link down below, but you want to at least have your measurements. And I also loved um, doing like a cardboard cutout of a foot, especially if it's for other people in your family, you can't keep measuring their feet all the time. Just get a cardboard, like get a piece of cardboard, trace their foot, and then mark on there, like where that widest point is, where their ankle bone is, um, where their toe starts, put all of those on there as well. And another great place to, that talks about like how to do this and use it for your socks is a tutorial or pattern recipe sort of for the fish lips kiss heel. She uses this cardboard cutout method and she has all of these different things marked. And I think it's a great idea to, especially for those people in your family who you want to knit a lot of socks for. So you're not having to like look at their foot all the time. You can use this cardboard cutout and know those approximate measurements and where their toe starts and all of that. So I'll put a link for that down below as well. 
Now, another sort of minor mistake, but still happens, is not paying attention to the sock length. Like you knit the first sock and you don't count the rows or rounds as you knit. So when you're knitting the second sock, you've got to go back and either count or just try to roughly estimate, like to make sure they're gonna be the same length. And just, I mean, that's a very simple fix. As you're knitting your sock, all you need to do is just like every 10 rounds, as I, I just count and I keep track after I work the heel, I'll put a marker on that row when I, the round when I start working in the round again after working the heel. I put a marker there and then every 10 rounds I put another marker. So when I get to the length that I know I need on the first sock, I can write that down. How many rounds did I take to get to the length I needed to, before I start my toe. And then I can use that number when I'm knitting the next sock. So I know they're gonna be exactly the same length. And of course you can also get around this by knitting two socks at the same time on magic loop or any other methods like that would work as well. And Emma left a comment about that as well. She mentions keeping track of rows, something she hasn't done, but she wants to do for future, sh future socks. <laughs> So yes, that's something, and as you knit more socks, you might start to um, think about those numbers because your row gauge, it might vary a little from one sock yarn to another, but probably not too much depend. I mean, if you're using the same sort of, you know, high twist, um, a good superwash yarn, then you'll probably get about the same number of rounds per inch. And then you can start to just use the number that you know you like. So if you know you like 20 rounds in the cuff, then you'll always, you know, it's just sort of something that you can write down and have a personal sock recipe for yourself. And that's just something you just have to do with time as well as, as you knit more socks. Now, those were all the mistakes I wanted to talk about, but we had a lot more that were left from different comments. So we're going to talk about those as well. And the first is knitting the cuff too tight. So from Kristen, she says, making the cuff too tight to fit. What I asked, what are the mistakes that you've done? This is something that she has done. And I did this on my very first pair as well. It was a cuff down sock, but I think I probably just used like the long tail cast on, but I did it very tightly and the cuff didn't fit. It wouldn't even get around like my ankle that that high part, the instep, it wouldn't get past that. So that's a very common thing to just cast on too tightly. So use a different cast on or cast on loosely. It is possible to do the long tail cast on, but do it more loosely. It's something I didn't know when I first started knitting. And the same goes for toe up socks. If you are um, binding off at the cuff, use like a Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off or like the sewn bind off can be done pretty loosely as well. So just want to make sure you're working that area loosely because you're expect you're asking a lot of that cuff to go over all of those different contours of your foot and still stay up and fit well. So you want to make sure it's going to stretch and be elastic so it will snap back and hold in place on your foot as well. The next comment from Stephanie about making one sock and then getting distracted. So yeah, second sock syndrome is definitely a thing that a lot of knitters suffer through. I don't think I've ever had that problem hmm but if you do I can't recall a time that I've actually not finished a pair of socks um, but there are plenty of ways to avoid it if that's something that you do you could do two at a time socks on magic loop I have a tutorial for that as well I can put down below you can do I know the first time I knit socks on double pointed needles I wanted to make sure they were going to be the same exact length and I was so scared about trying to count and make sure I didn't mess up somewhere that I had two sets of double pointed needles. So I finished one cuff and then I cast on and did the other cuff for the other sock right away. And then I did like the length of the leg and then I did the length of the leg for the other sock. So when I was finished, I had finished both socks and I knew they were exactly the same length. Now for me, that wasn't because I wanted them. Um, I was concerned about them being... I was more concerned about them being the same length and the same size than I was about not finishing. So either thing works in those cases. Um, but let me see. You could reward yourself, you know, tell yourself you'll buy another pretty skein of sock yarn if you finish the pair that you're working on. There's different ways. You just have to find the method that works for you for making sure you're going to finish that second sock. The next one was about heel type. Emma left in her comment 
uh, her very long comment. She had a section here about the heel flap and gusset. It fits her so well, but sometimes I don't fancy doing it because it seems to take more concentration for me than other heel types. So she uses other heel techniques, but doesn't enjoy wearing those socks as much. So I guess this is sort of a catch 22. You have to find like the heel type that suits you. And then if you want it to fit, then that's just the heel type you're gonna use. And this can be part of that pattern recipe when you know like the general number of stitches that you like for your sock, you know what size needle you like to knit on. Then you find the heel and even the toe that you prefer. And in a lot of cases, you can mix and match with patterns and you can replace one heel and put a different heel in if there's another heel that you like instead. But of course, this comes with practice. You're not gonna be able to do this with your first pair of socks. So practice knitting those socks and you will start to learn all of these skills. And that does bring me right to the last one. I had a couple comments from people saying that they really struggle with knitting socks, either dropping stitches or the techniques or the DPNs or the magic loop or all of the things that they really struggled with from Cottage Keeper and Betsy James. This was something that they both struggled with. And my um, that was part of my, my response to one of them was because I think she said she had only knit like maybe one pair of socks or something in the past few years. And I said, well, first off, you need to knit some socks. Like you need to, you can't learn these skills if you don't actually start practicing them. And yes, they're not easy at first. It wasn't easy the first time I used double pointed needles to knit socks. It's much easier now. It's still fiddly. I still don't love it all the time, especially when I'm doing stranded color work. I don't like that on double pointed needles, but uh, you don't learn these skills unless you practice these skills and they do take time and mistakes and ripping out and redoing. I still do that plenty. Believe me, I'm ripping out things all the time and redoing them. Um, but you won't, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of here? Exceed or excel or move forward, progress in your skills unless you actually start practicing. And the other thing, if it's really a struggle, what you can do is um, cast on just a practice sock, but use like size US 7 or US 8 needles and like a worsted medium weight, like Craft Yarn Council medium weight four, an Aran yarn, even like something thicker. Cast on, like pick a pattern you wanna try, cast on the smallest size and just, the I mean, the sock probably is not gonna fit anybody but it's just to practice the skills and it's to practice them on larger needles and with thicker yarn because yeah it's really fiddly trying to do two socks at the same time on magic loop or even double pointed needles trying to cast on and get that circle going it's very fiddly it can be hard to do especially when your needles are so thin your yarn is so fine so just bump it up, go up like to a worsted weight yarn and just do a practice sock just to get the skills down. And then when you're feeling more comfortable, then you can go back down to like the sock needles and the sock yarn and then give that a try. And you'll probably find that it's much more comfortable once you start to get those techniques on thicker yarn and bigger needles. Now that's all I had to discuss about sock knitting mistakes, but I'm sure you can think of others. So if you wanna leave a comment and share those mistakes that you've made, mistakes that you've seen others make, and maybe we could discuss these in another video, but there's actually a lot more that we could discuss about knitting socks. So I'm gonna put a playlist right here with more knit and chat episodes. We talk about sock fit, proper sock care, and all of these other topics when it comes to knitting socks. So click right there and I'll see you in the next video.